When Merle Phelps puts his hand to a piece of cherry or ash, maple or black walnut, fine wood slowly transforms and becomes fine art. Flattening, shaping, carving, and smoothing, the expert woodworker designs and creates masterpieces. Merle opened his wood shop in Danbury 15 years ago. He spent 35 years working as a carpenter, building what others asked. He wanted the freedom to create his own pieces. I always like fine woodworking and stuff like that. <clears throat> and uh, I was looking at a magazine and said, I really want to do that. At 50 years old, he enrolled in a nine-month course at the Center for Furniture Craftsmanship in Maine. It was where he handcrafted this Chinese coffer, one of his most prized pieces. Making these was a bear. Unique angles and hand-carved motifs, just a few of the cabinet's special touches. If you open up the door, this lifts up, and that's the hinge. And the Chinese made them this way. They didn't use any glue. He poured 700 hours into this gem, most of it hewn from cherry. Inside the drawers, something special. I'd never seen Cortisone Sycamore before at that time. But the teacher told us always put something really nice inside so it's a surprise when people open it up. The cabinet won Best in Show in 2023 at the Guild of New Hampshire Woodworkers first annual New England competition. Another treasure, this arched desk. It's my own design. Legendary furniture craftsman Jerry Osgood taught Merle a straight line was a wasted opportunity. So I try to put some courage into some of the stuff I do. I'm not as good as him, not by any means. But, uh, you know, it makes a piece more interesting if it's got some courage to it. Merle was tasked with creating a desk using wood he had on hand. He's got a little mahogany, black walnut, ash. The interior, I was again, I was trying to use pieces. And you can see the lighter wood there. That's actually butternut. I had some butternut kicking around, so I used that. The dovetailing on the drawers, just striking. When you dovetail something on a curve, you have to be careful. It's not a straight dovetail like on a regular drawer like this, which has regular dovetails. Occasionally, Merle still does carpentry work, but it's a bit like hiring Rembrandt to paint your house. Whether creating doors for a home or cabinets for a sibling's country store, the detail is exquisite. He recently finished a Gone with the Wind type grand staircase for an 18,000 square foot mansion under construction in Sunapee, curved in both directions, leading to a landing and balcony, which is also curved. A challenging job that many woodworkers said couldn't be done. Morrill built the stairs in his shop, creating molds and a frame so he could ensure precise measurements. The bottom step is 10 feet wide. I didn't work on it steady, but it took me about two and a half years before I finished it. And I didn't, do, I didn't even do the railing. This chest has got to be the fanciest toolbox in the shed. It's made out of century-old fur, wood that would have otherwise been tossed during a friend's home remodeling. I couldn't see throw another way because, uh, I mean, this is old growth fur. It's not fur from nowadays, which would have wider, uh, wider strips, whereas this is pretty tight. Trays and drawers just too pretty to fill with dirty, dusty tools. No two pieces are alike. Merle's making a dining table out of this huge tree root. This is unbelievable. What is, what kind of wood is this? It's some sort of cedar, I'm not exactly sure. He used a router for hours and hours to make the bottom flat, then flipped it over and did the same to the top so a piece of glass can fit over it. Merle plans to make matching benches with these curved pieces of live edge wood. Wow, what a conversation piece. Live edge wood is hip now. So are other pieces with wood imperfections. Nowadays, they're promoting knots and uh, 
uh, irregularities in pieces. You know, like the live edge tables, the river tables, you know, with the epoxy going down through it, that kind of stuff. So essentially, they're making a market out of stuff they never could sell before. Before Merle goes to work on a piece of furniture or a wood carving, he gets to know you, looking to incorporate something personal in the piece. That's why I like meeting the customers first, to get a sense of where they're coming from. Craftsmanship that's distinctive and unique, shaped by experienced hands, guided by an artistic eye. Whatever he creates, you know it'll be one of a kind.